Bang! Needs Knives, I'm Jared with my lovely wife, Kara. Hey guys, we're here in Dallas, Texas today visiting the Tactile Knife Co. shop and we're here to see how a USA knife is made. But first, let's get a little bit of a history on Tactile Knife Co. So before we talk about the history and how the products are made, let's talk about some of the products that are actually made here at the shop, like the in-house designs, the side click pen, the bolt action pen, the rock wall, and the bear. Now, some of the knife sets are, do have designers. We have this one that's designed by Matthew Christensen. This is the Dread Eye. Then we have their newest knife design, which is the one we are going to be focusing on the most today, done by Richard Rogers. And this is the Maverick. All right, guys, I'm here with Will, and he's gonna give us some history on Tactile. So I started the company in uh, 2012 with a Kickstarter for pins. Uh, I pretty quickly thereafter started going after the EDC crowd uh, with some bolt action pins. Uh, that started doing well enough that I started getting into knives. Uh, we made a bolt action knife, I guess back in 2017, I think, 2018. Um, that sort of piqued the interest in knives and uh, started looking around for people that could help out. Matt, who's walking by over there, is uh, one of the, the early guys that helped out with the knife stuff. Uh, you know, started off with 160 square feet. Currently, we're in 48,000 square feet. Uh, it's just been a, a, a fun journey along the way. Big um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been been cool to add in more equipment, uh, amazing people, and now we finally have this uh, annoying you guys little got dog. Other employees. Yeah, yeah. My dog. Uh, how many employees do you guys have? Uh, right now, I think it's 49. 49. Yep. Nice, nice. Very cool. All right, guys, so we are with Mike, and he's going to show us the entire shop on how the Maverick is made. So the Maverick's our new folder designed by Richard Rogers. Uh, we make everything in-house except for the washers and the springs. Both are made locally here in Texas as well. Um, this is our turning department where all of our lathes are. Our lathes are running primarily the hardware and the pivot collars, all of the details that you see that are, that are turned parts. So it's taking a, a long bar of material and cutting it into small pieces of, of screws and to the colors as well. Very cool. Yeah. All right, so we're going to check out the laser now. So on the laser, we're making the blade blanks. So we're taking a raw sheet of material, we're sitting in there, and then it's cutting out the profile of, these, of the Maverick. Uh, from here, it goes on to some other machines. So that's just a plain blank plate. Yes, yeah, so it magna cut. Just straight off, off the laser. Yeah. So then from the laser, we send the, our blanks off to heat treat. After they come back from heat treat, they've got a rough finish and they also need to come to a flatness. Uh, so because we're a precision machine shop, we have to hold a consistent flatness before we can grind bevels, before right. we can mill profiles. So we have to throw it on here on the, on the flatness grinder. So we're throwing all the blades onto here on the flatness grinder. It's getting a smooth, consistent, flat finish so that our machines know what thickness they're working with. And this is a giant abrasive wheel, right? Yeah, so you have two abrasive wheels, they're spinning, and then also the carriers that hold we're the parts are too? spinning as okay. well. Nice. So this is very efficient on, on speed and creates really high efficient and very well finished parts. And these are blades after it came out? Right? Yes, sir. Yeah, very cool. Since, since we're already over here, yeah. uh, this is our hardness tester where we test our, our rock well. Nice. Uh, so right now we're hitting Magna Cut in 63, 64. That's awesome. uh, for the Maverick, we're, tr we're trying to raise that for the Bayer and the rock well as well. Very cool. Yeah, I'd love to see that. This is a wire EDM uh, at Tactile Knife Company. We have four different EDM machines, three wire EDMs, and uh, the fourth machine is what's called a small hole EDM. That's only used for making start holes and things, really hard materials. The wire EDMs are what actually cut the profiles of our products. Um, it uses, in our case, a brass wire that's 12 one thousandths of an inch in diameter. And there's a, uh, a high frequency DC power source that energizes that wire. It creates a, an electrical arc between the wire and whatever it is we're cutting. And it erodes the material and water flushes it out. It's a, capable of extreme accuracy. Uh, this series of machines, we can easily hold about a 10,000th of an inch on it. So, 
This is a 20 kilogram spool of the brass wire. Uh, I at one point figured out that was, I don't remember, it's, it's multiple miles long. This gives us uh, about a two and a half day run time. So we can run lots and lots of parts on one setup overnight or over a weekend. Nice, nice. Um, after the wire comes out of here and it goes through the machine, um, it is recycled back down and through and it exits the machine looking fairly similar here in the back. Now, this is only, the only thing this has come in contact with is highly purified water. So this is very, very clean and it's recyclable. Uh, we get somewhere around 50 cents back on every dollar that we spend on wire. So it's an economical process as long as you can, you know, start with the machine. So now we're gonna check out some of the mills. So on the mills, we're putting a slight profile, our radius, and then we're also making sure that our holes are to tolerance and our lock faces to tolerance as well. This is a really quick process before it goes on to bevel grinding. So now we're taking a flat, straight, little radius blade that's been back from decrease. It's ready to go into bevel grinding. On this machine behind me, it grinds one half of the blade, and then you flip it to the other side, it grinds the second half. And it makes a blade that's ready for finishing and ready to go into your knife. Now we are to the part where the blades get their finishing done. So here at finishing, we're taking the, this raw blade that has been through all the machines currently, and we're trying to make it into a knife that is presentable, that looks good, and looks really classy. Uh, so this centrifugal barrel machine has barrels that rotate one direction, but also in an opposite direction at the same time, make, creating a lot of g-force and making it where the media really does an effective job finishing this blade. And how long does it take for each one? Five to 15 minutes wow. is very yeah. fast. It's, it's, most uh, tumblers take hours, if not days. Let's see you guys have some of those over here. Yeah, that's, for, that's for some other alternate finishes that we gotcha. do as well, gotcha. yeah. All right, well now let's see how the handles are made. So they set off here, raw titanium on the laser, and then they get cut to shape. Okay. So after they get cut, this is where they get machined? Yeah, so they go into a fixture and have operation one. Operation one's doing this side, milling out the pocket for the liner, milling out the room for the spring, and also drilling some preliminary holes. Nice. And then it flips over and goes into operation two and creates the smooth textured finish that tactile is known for. I love this finish. This is such an amazing finish. Thank you. Very, very uh, tactile. Yeah, right. to the point. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So our tactile finish is known from our pin brand. We had to bring that over from the knife brand as well. So both the Rockwald and the Maverick and all the other knives we've released have this fine texturing uh, that we're known for. This is a machine that's doing that right now. Uh, it's creating a ball end mill and bringing it back and forth across and leaving this really great textured feel. So does this machine also do the contouring? Yeah, so it's creating a pass and doing an arc every single move. So it's going up and over. Uh, nice. Just removing material, but also leaving that clean finish behind. Very cool. So now we're back to the finishing machines. So in finishing, all we're doing is making it where this raw machine handle has a more worn in, broken look. It also feels smoother. It makes it where if you use it and it scratches it, it doesn't show that as much. Right, right. Very cool. But it adjusts the tactile a little bit, but it's still there. Yeah. You still yeah. feel that grip. Yeah, I, still, I really like it. Just without even the tumbling, it feels so cool. But yeah, both yeah. Them, yeah, both of them are really nice. Yeah, and it's definitely going to hide the scratches and wear and stuff like that. For sure. Yeah, very cool. Now that we've shown this process, let's go into assembly and see what it looks like put together. Let's do it. All right, now we are in assembly with Alejandro putting together some of the knives. So with all the parts that you saw earlier, they all come here to assembly to be put together to turn into real, to knives. Uh, so we are putting together Mavericks pretty much exclusively right now, trying to get this model out the door. Uh, these go from assembly over to sharpening and then over to quality control. We have six assembly techs that are full-time making these knives. So now we're going into sharpening. We're gonna show the process of that. Let's come in. This is Mike, our assembly manager. He's going to be sharpening Mavericks for the next few days, trying to get ready Mike? for Blade Show Texas.
We've spent a lot of time refining this process and we've talked to multiple different knife makers that have come into the shop and have shown uh, some tips and tricks on how to be the best at sharpening knives Good. that we can be for a production facility. Very cool. The belts are going nice and slow too where they're not going to burn the edges or anything. For sure. Yeah. Every different blade steel we use has a different challenge on sharpening it. So uh, yeah. from 3V to Magna Cut to 20CV to yeah. XHP, yeah. every single steel that we've thrown at our sharpening crew, it takes them a little bit of time to adjust, but once they do, it comes out hair right. and sharp. Very cool. Very nice. Let's take a look at quality control. So after everything gets assembled and sharpened, it comes into here and one of our quality control technicians takes checks a look at it, make sure that it doesn't have lock fail, doesn't have lock stick, has a good edge, that it's cleaned and ready to go to the final customer, and that everything just is what a tactile knife so should be. This is where you bang on them. Yeah, right. we, we test them, make sure that they're good. Yeah. There you go. Very cool. From here, they go into shipping. So or, what happens with um, something that pa that doesn't pass QC? What do you guys do with it? Anything that doesn't pass quality control goes to the assembly tech that assembled it. So we keep good track of who made the knife All so right. that they can actually handle the things that they did wrong right. so they can learn from that process. Good idea. Very good idea. Yeah, and then you don't repeat it in the future. You yeah, can kind of learn from your wrong. mistakes. Yeah, for sure. This is always going to be something. For sure. Sure. So I gotta say, I feel like we are standing in a gold mine right now. Pretty much. So after every, all the other steps that we've seen today happen, after the knife's assembled, after sharpened and quality control, it comes in here to inventory, and then it just, whenever an order is placed, we package it up and send it to our customers. So all these boxes are full. These are full of pins. Full of pins. Uh, yeah, the knife, knife inventory is substantially less. Uh -huh. uh, it's just, as a brand, we haven't developed in, uh, to the same amount of production level. You guys been doing pens a lot longer. So. For sure, yeah. Of course. All right. You guys are getting there, though. For sure. Yeah, we've been really happy with the community yeah. and how much of a, how the response has been. Uh, it's been really positive. It has. It absolutely has because we've gotten lots of uh, positive, you know, just all around about you guys from the community and, you know, just from the people in general. Having started in 2020 with only a few machines for the knife company, now to the point where we have this many employees and have this much capacity and abil availability to make cool and unique designs, it's really cool to see this company grow and we look forward to seeing what the next five year brings. Yeah, years for sure. this you guys brand. have um, some stuff planned for the next five, right? Yeah, for sure. Not, not <clears throat> primarily for the next five. We have some right. goals and some, some items that we'd like to have. you're hoping to hit. Yeah, we, are, we already have the next two designs for, uh, for folders that we're going to be releasing this year. We're working on the third and fourth uh, that may bleed over into next year. Right. Uh, but we're really trying to um, increase our offerings and offer things like a button lock switchblade right. and like a frame lock flipper and a, a better, right. more right. improved right. 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 slip joint. Yeah. So how many, um, if, if you can disclose this, I don't know, yeah, yeah. how many Mavericks are you guys able to produce monthly right now? Uh, that's still, you guys just started that's still that's, unknown. Right. So like, right. that's still an unknown variable. We're trying to figure out where in the process needs improving so we can streamline the process, right. make the best product possible, and still do it in a timely fashion. But if it's not the best product possible, we have to, we have to hold that as the standard first over speed. Is it something that's maybe a little bit trickier than the rock wall? Uh, it's or actually, just different. It's different than the rock wall. Right, so right. the a crossbar lock system is a different system. Mm -hmm. And just like the rock wall, it took us six months worth of development to be able to make the rock wall a sellable item. Uh, right. The the Maverick has taken us even longer uh, with the iterations and the and the changes and the issues that we encountered yeah. and had to go again through another another phase of prototyping. Uh, but we've finally gotten it to the point where it's ready to go and and ship to the final customer. Right. So we're really happy with it. Yeah, and a part you guys didn't hear is um, when we were in the QC check, he said that every single knife goes to a QC check. They don't just do like a couple per batch. They do yeah. every single one, which is really cool. Yeah, we, we hold a lot of pride in our work. We're happy that it's made here, made here in Texas, made here in the United States, mm -hmm. that all of these families and all of these employees are supported yeah. by this brand. Yes. Uh, we, we take a lot of pride in that. And if we if we don't hold ourselves to that standard, then we can't ship it out the door. Yeah, and I think, I think a lot of the community wants to see more out of the USA 
as much as possible because we know it can be tough for some of the companies but but you guys are doing it a few other ones are doing it really well so yeah you know, it is something to be proud of we're not a, we're not a crew of three people with one designer and and right. people that run marketing and just box stuff up and ship it out right. we make it everything that we can here right. uh, the few parts that we don't make here like the springs for the for the maverick those are made like three miles down the road okay. uh, the heat treat is done locally here as well we try and keep as much if it's not made here it's made locally yeah. all of, even all of our packaging our, our packaging is made in Dallas uh, by two different Very companies cool. so nice. we take a lot of pride in, in every single detail that we can uh, being involved in Texas and Texas made as much as we can as well yeah because the first machines we saw were making the hardware yeah yeah so all, every screw so you guys are making we're not screws buying screws here. off that, the box that's amazing because yeah. most companies have to buy, outsource you know yeah or, the, or they're making a plain Jane run-of-the-mill screw we try right. and also lean into some of our strengths because we have that much training yeah. capacity yeah. we can flex a little bit yeah that's awesome very very cool all right guys so we got to see how these knives are made from blank metal and blank titanium to a finished product and i want to thank mike for having us here and allowing us to see all your shop and being so transparent and everything you guys have been awesome and we really appreciate it thanks for coming thanks for showing the world this process yeah